I know, I know, I'm really late on this, but let me tell you guys why I'm barely just making a video on this. The past few weeks, I was sick, and my throat was literally killing me the entire time. And I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me sound like I'm dying throughout the entire video. I already did that once, and my throat was literally killing me throughout that entire day. So yeah, there's that. So are we good now? I cool, cool. You guys are awesome. Now onto the video. CN just recently dropped a new character known as Awakener, and apparently this is supposed to be Aidan Camo. I have no idea what in the world is going on in the story right now, but they have been spicing things up lately. Awakener is part of the dark, mythical, and time faction of all things. I wonder why that is. Out of all things, why that? Her talent increases her damage dealt and own range the more you start her up. At the end of her turn, she can select two enemies to cast spell which will reduce their healing effect and lower their mobility by 1 when trying to move more than 2 blocks. That lasts for 2 turns which cannot be dispelled. And you'll need to wait 3 turns at 3 and 4 stars to use this again, but 2 turns if at 5 and 6 stars. When she dies, she places a dimensional gate at the tower she died at. Then when the next round starts, she summons a doppelganger of herself, but has 30% less reduced stats of her original one. And this doppelganger will only last for 3 rounds, but if she manages to kill an enemy, she basically revives herself and gets everything back, which can only happen one time every battle. Alright, so we can expect every new mage to have increased range. That seems to be the norm now. The mobility down will definitely be annoying, and it seems like you can actually block this by like gospel and stuff like that. As for the second part of her talent, looks like they finally got tired of straight up giving a revive effect so they made a creative way of doing so. And I actually really like how they did it. You killed her and thought it was over? Nah, she's coming back for round 2, but not as strong as she was before. There is that 3 round limit before she can actually die so there will be some desperation for a kill from her in order to get her back to her actual self. And if you can't get a kill by then, then too bad. Even though she gets weaker by killing her, doesn't necessarily mean that she poses no threat. Her 1c skill has a 4 turn cooldown that can be used on an ally to give 2 random buffs and they will actually swap places with each other. But when used on an enemy that has a curse, which is the debuff on her talent, it would be two random weakening debuffs instead, then afterwards, she can move two blocks to attack. This skill does have a range limit by the way, so it's not like she can teleport from one side of the map to the other. Her 2C will do more damage against enemies who have curse, then after battle, she restores 20% of HP and then she can teleport two blocks around her. Then her 3C which has a passive that buffs up Heroes of Time characters when she ends her turn which has the special faction buff effect that lets you do 8% more damage and an extra 8% against enemies with curse that lasts for 4 turns. This 3C summons 6 projectiles to enemies within 3 blocks, and each of these will do more damage on the same enemies the more it hits them by 10% while applying 2 weakening debuffs. If only one enemy is hit by this 3C, then the skill cooldown is reduced by 3. Also, if the enemy does not have any soldiers, the damage is increased by 300%. When you end up killing the enemy, it refreshes the talent cooldown. That all sounds really good on paper, but there are some things that I have some problems about this character. First off, why Heroes of Time faction of all things? I know the factions are supposed to be related to the story, so what's up with that? I don't really follow the story a whole lot, especially what's going on in CN. I only find stuff that are interesting, but if she was a mythical faction buffer, I would let that slide. As for the actual 3C itself, it's an AoE that you want to use mainly on one enemy? It's insane, I gotta admit. I've seen videos and she can actually one shot with it, but really only on one enemy. She can probably do a whole lot even on a group of enemies. I would say on at least a group of two at best. Three or more, she probably won't be able to do a whole lot besides giving those debuffs. And the damage multiplier on this isn't all that high either. Is she worth looking forward to? I would say not necessarily. Sure, she can be really good. I would say maybe in PvP for general use like in regular content. She isn't exactly the craziest thing in the world, I would say. Also, I should put this out there that she is the only new character and her banner will work the same way as with Wetam. So my global peeps and SEA players, if you guys are actually really thinking about getting her, 
then I would really start saving up now. But we still have a few months to go until we actually get her. And there are a few characters along the way that are actually really good. The next one we got is a new SP form for Leon. I feel like he didn't really need it, like he is still good even without it, but has kind of fallen off due to just because there are so many different characters to choose from. His new talent ignores skill cost limit and will increase his damage dealt and reduce his physical damage taken, and the effect will be doubled when he is actively attacking. Okay so that sounds way too good to be true. That would mean a total of 60%. Either that's the case or it's something else cause 60% damage increase is a lot. You can ignore enemy obstruction when moving 3 blocks after attacking then at the end of his turn. He applies a special terrain effect called Hades for 2 turns and what it actually does is that when an enemy moves onto this tile, they take fixed damage and gain damage dealt decreased by 20% for 2 turns from what I've seen in the videos. I'm so glad that he can still move 3 blocks after attacking. So glad that they kept that. His tile effect is very similar to Himiko with the exception that she needs a skill in order to do so. So far, not entirely bad. It's basically his regular talent with some few additions added. His new skill includes this AoE that has a 2 block range around himself that applies heal block only on infantry with 2 turns. Then afterwards, the terrain changes to Hades. The second new skill is a command effect that increases cavalry units attack and int by 50% and an additional 10% when fighting against lancers, but when fighting against infantry, they will attack first. When Leon has his exclusive equipment, all cavalry units can freely move regardless of the terrain. Then the passive on this skill will increase his normal attack by 6% up to 30% for every blocked move. Also the new soldiers that he can unlock is the werewolf. So far his SP form is not that bad. I would say it's pretty solid. I don't think it really changes him all that much. His talent is almost the same thing just with a few extra things with it. His AOE is alright in the command skill. I can see it being useful. Everything about it except for the ignore terrain restrictions. In PvE, it's great don't get me wrong. But in terms of PvP, it can be a bit optional because Leon does have access to the mechanical knights and those will actually help him get somewhere around the map. I do like his SP form, but in terms of gameplay, it doesn't really change him all that much. I don't think it really changes his playstyle all that much. Like compared to Elwyn, his SP form completely changed him. Like everything about how you would use him is entirely different. With Leon right here, I'm seeing him as the same case as with Leiden. Same playstyle with not a whole lot of changes. At first I was really hyped when it was rumored that he was eventually going to get one, but after seeing this, it's just whatever. If they were ever going to give an SP form to a character, I would say give it to a underrated character like what they did with Lewin and I think that they did a really great job with them. For the exclusive equipment, we got a helmet for Elma, this gives her 10% HP and increases her healing effect by 20%. If she has the faction buff special effect, her light mirror cannot be dispelled. The next one is for the Iron Blood Commander which is also a helmet that increases her HP by 10% I think. What it does is that it will increase her talent buff formation by an extra 1 turn. Both of these aren't that bad at all especially Elma, given that she does need an actual faction buff from someone like Lobano or Hilda and not someone from Lightbringer since hers doesn't really have that, Iron Blood Commander is also not that bad. But I also kind of wish it was something else because her talent buff does last for 3 turns and she can easily use that again especially at 6 stars and when it comes to using her at the Gen skill. But even with that being the case, that extra turn can be quite useful. As for casting skills, the first one we got is for Hilda which will increase her attack by 10% and when she has her exclusive equipment, Gun Guard which is the buff that lets her change it to her Lancer class and Riding Charge which is the buff that changes her to Cavalry cannot be dispelled. Second is Wilder which increases his int by 5% and when using a single target support skill, it gives them a defensive buff I think from what I remembered. Translation on this is really weird as you all might know. Third is for Illustrio which will increase her crit rate by 5% which is doubled when she is carrying Archer Soldiers. The last one is for Alfred which will increase his attack by 10% and when he's in water, using his 3C skill, the cooldown is reduced by 2 turns. 
my favorite one out of all of these fours has got to be Hilda here. The thing that she can do is be able to change her class from Lancer to Cavalry, or if she's in Cavalry, then she is able to change to Lancers from her 3C buff. And the problem with it is that you were able to dispel it. So her having this casting skill will be a really great thing to have. Cause imagine if you have Cavalry Hilda and you switch to Lancer using her 3C, trying to counter Elwyn. But then he just comes up to you anyways and is like, nah bro, that ain't happening. And ends up dispelling it and possibly one-shotting her. Waller is alright, Illustrio is not that bad, and Alfred is pretty good since he wants to be in water almost all the time. I say almost, but he wants to be in water all the time. As for new banners, we got the faction banner as I like to call them. This time they actually updated the pool by adding more characters, but this time it rotates around Elis, Mythical, Meteor, Tactics, and Origins. Not only that, there's also a Valentine banner that features King Red and Duelist, Shilinka and Rainforest, Vincent and Elusia, Dan, Tiaris, and Diehard. Definitely not something to really look forward to, unless you don't have Tiaris. But at this point of the game, you should, unless you're like, a new player. An Equipment Wishes banner will also be available as well as Wetan making his return. For new content, I know it's a lot of people's favorite event, myself included, the Endless Voyage returns, bringing in some new skills and tactics along with it. There's this background that you can get by participating in a special event as well as this new building. When you reach Town Hall level 20 in the floating city, you'll be able to unlock a third island as well. Oh, and I should also mention that there is a equipment and hero bag that you can buy, and the hero bag has characters all the way up to Grand Shield and Joa and Connor. We got a couple of skins that we can look forward to. Starting off with the Echo of Light, it's for the Wonder and Azusa. Both of them look really great. There was some people complaining about the Wanderer skins about not being able to see her eyes. It's a weird thing. But my problem is with Azusa skin. It looks great, I don't have any complaint about that. But how are they gonna release another Echo of Light skin for her when she doesn't even have one that you can get with skin vouchers? Makes no sense why they did that. The next one you can get in the store is for older Licorice, and what she's wearing is to celebrate the Chinese New Year theme, which is already here in Global too, by the time of this recording at least. Her design? Fire. And those little hair, I don't know what they are, I think those are like furs or something like that, that's attached to her hair, they look really nice. They did another really nice job making a nice looking skin for her. The next two skins that you can also get in the store is for the Iron Blood Commander in Kaguya. The design is based on Valentine's Day, so I think there are going to be some other ones that might make a rerun as well. Nonetheless, another great look. All the skins so far has been looking really nice. Been looking really spicy to be exact. The last skin we'll be taking a look at is a Macho Lotto skin for Caroline. I'm really liking this one. The style on this one really suits her really well, I think, for what she is basically like in the game. So once this comes to global, I might actually use my crystals to get it. With that, that should be about everything that's happening in the CN side of Languister. If you guys were expecting me to make this much sooner, I'm really sorry about that. I know that I'm really late on this. I wasn't really feeling good in the last few weeks. Then it got worse like a week later. But I'm totally fine now. I'm really fine now. Things should be back in order. And I hope that you guys can forgive me. But I know you guys love me, right? No? Oh, oh okay. I see how it is. This update can be worth looking forward to, I would say for some people. Awakener doesn't really excite me all that much. Not as much as when Wet Time first came out. Probably because Wet Time was the first character to actually have an actual animation for his DC. And ended up being so hyped because of how insane he was. He was basically broken at that time. Awakener is also really good, but she is a bit more strict in terms of her kits. And the way how you want to use her 3C is pretty much telling you to really only use it on one enemy because you have a much better kill potential. In a group of two enemies, maybe. At best, you probably do a lot. When using it against three or more, you probably won't be able to do a whole lot because the damage on this isn't high at all. 
and is really only stronger the more times it hits the same enemies, or when an enemy has no soldiers. She isn't broken by all means if that's what you guys have been thinking the whole time. My only real issue about her is that she's a time faction buffer, and not something like a mythical faction buffer. That's all I really have to say, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and feel free to let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this update that dropped in Tien. I'm really liking the skins that they designed, that's something I'm definitely really looking forward to the most, but of course, I'll try and summon Awakener and possibly get a video about her when she arrives in global. But yeah, thanks for watching, your fellow Z.